Hi, I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. I'd like to talk about loose pin blocks. There are lots of different approaches to, uh, to fixing this um, element, which is fairly common on these older pianos. Um, I've worked on a lot of older pianos over the years and fallen in love with a lot of them and just hate to condemn them, which uh, a loose pin block would, uh, would if, if you didn't know how to take care of it, would really um, require you to do. You, to just throw the piano out if you didn't know how to, how to fix this. So um, this, is, this is a perfect candidate here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. It's actually a pretty nice piano. Um, in spite of its age, it's, it's over 100 years old, but um, it sounds really good and um, um, it looks really nice. And so the only, the only real remedy for this one is to fix the lock. So, um, I'll, I'll start off just by saying there, there are other approaches um, that, are, that are less permanent. There, there are, I, I, guess, I guess there's a balance. One, one approach is to just tap pins in deeper. You can, you can put a, a brace under here. Frankly, if it's just one or two pins I, and I'm tuning and I just need to tap it real quick, I'm in a hurry or something at a customer's house, I'll just quickly tap it. Um, and I haven't really had issues. Actually, I haven't ever had any kind of issues. And in a lot of the literature, it'll, it'll um, tell you to beware of, of doing that. It'll recommend putting a brace, taking out the action, putting the brace in here, and then tapping the pins in. And if I were to be doing a whole section or much less the whole piano, which I wouldn't do anyway, um, then yeah, I would recommend putting a brace in. But, but you know, I'm not gonna, when I'm in a hurry, that kind of defeats the purpose to take the action out and it, and it, and it doesn't seem to put that much stress on it anyway. But that's, that's not, not the approach that, that really is the focus of this video. Um, another approach that again is not the focus of this video would be to replace the pins just with a little bit fatter pin. There are um, uh, pros and cons of doing it that way. Um, something, something that I've done and it's, it's successful. But, uh, but again, that's not the purpose of this video. And the final thing that I'll mention before we get into the actual purpose of the video is you, something that I've also done is you can put little metal sleeves in there, and that also works. I, in, in my opinion, if you're going to be taking the tuning pin out anyway to put the metal sleeve in and drill it in or, or, or tap, that, tap that tuning pin back in, it just makes sense. Why not just put a brand new pin in rather than using that metal sleeve, which I've done and had great success with, but um, again, pros and cons to that. Okay, so the CA glue treatment is something that I've been doing. Um, first one I did was probably, I don't know, 2000, 2002, something like that. So it's been a, a long time and I've never had this fail, ever. It works every single time. It's a great solution. It's, it takes care of the entire piano. Um, relatively quickly and inexpensively. Um, yeah, I guess I guess the only thing that I would I would recommend is if you're doing an upright, especially in a in a customer's home, put a blanket down under the uh, under the, the floor or the carpet before you tip the piano on its back. In the case of an upright, or in the case of a grand, take the action out. Um, I've had I've had two horror stories, both of which worked out. Uh, this was this was when I very first started doing this treatment, and stupid me, um, with the uh, with the upright, I was putting it in, and uh, and some of the glue came dripping out of the bottom of the upright onto the customer's carpet, and uh, and I went up. Uh, this was in the basement, so I went upstairs and told the uh, told the customer, kind of hat in hand, I've destroyed your carpet. Um, there's there's super glue on it. There's this big spot, and they were like, "Oh yeah, don't worry, we're replacing that next week." So that was that was a really lucky break. And then the other horror story was with a grand. Um, uh, I didn't take the action out, and it dripped, and I had to replace. Uh, Maybe two or three of the weapons and some of the some of the uh, uh, hammer hammer flanges as well. 
which which ended up costing me more than I was being paid for the job. Um, so that was a that was a bad move on my part. But I haven't made that mistake since. So learn from my mistakes and use a carpet or use a use a blanket in the case of an upright. Take the action out, and then I put paper towels or newspaper or something down below um, on a grand so that any any glue that drips down won't make a mess. So, very simple process. I've done probably in the in the intervening decades um, since I first started doing this. I've done probably um, I don't know a couple hundred. I've done a lot of videos, and um, like I said earlier, in this video it has never not been a success. So I'm just putting paper towels down. Usually if it does drip down, it'll drip down on the sides over here. So I, um, well, that's not always the case. It can drip down just right in the middle, but it tends to come down more on the sides. And so I put these paper towels here. Come, come get the camera down in here to see what I'm talking about. Just count the paper towel up, up like that so it absorbs. Um, absorbs what is going to come dripping down here in just a second. And hopefully it doesn't drip down at all. And, and by the way, I should mention what, what, I, what I felt on this piano, and, and it's obvious. Um, when playing just a chromatic scale, you can hear notes that just sound way out. That, that sound like they don't even belong. You know, a piano where the pin block is tight and it hasn't been tuned in 20 or 30 or 40 years or whatever, it'll sound terribly out of tune, but they'll still generally sort of make sense. Um, but uh, where, where you have piano, where you have strings that are just completely, have nothing to do with their neighbors, then you can be pretty sure that there's an issue there with the, uh, with the pin block. And then of course, when I started to pitch raise this piano just yesterday, I noticed that uh, that that the pins were were loose. So you can get away with uh, two ounces for the for the whole piano. Use these little pipettes. I can I can get away with just one pipette for the whole piano, and two ounces of super glue, the uh, the water thin stuff. It's the viscosity of a thin oil. Um, the idea is that it uh, basically suck up some of this, put it at the base of the pin so as to make as little a mess as possible, and just kind of squeeze it in on each pin and keep going until it until it appears that it won't accept anymore, and just kind of move on. Usually, by the time I get from the bottom to the top, I all have only gone through maybe one ounce or one and a half ounces or so, and then I'll have. I'll have an extra half an ounce to, to an ounce to use on the uh, parts of the panel that I noticed were particularly loose. And that's, I, you know, I just use the whole two ounces. The last thing that I'll mention before actually doing it is I try and make it as clean as possible before I do it. So, you know, vacuum, of course, and blowing it out, and even Q-tips if you want. My, my thinking there is that, uh, that any glue that you do get on the plate, which is inevitable, it's impossible to do the whole the whole pin block without getting at least a drop here or there or something that you know the surface tension of the glue will break and it'll run onto the plate a little bit. It's never it's never a terrible eyesore, but there will be inevitably a little bit of glue. So let's get right to it. Suck up the CA glue. Are you able to get the camera right down? So I'm getting getting it to the base. And as soon as it uh, as soon as the CA glue, you see that right there where the CA glue starts to kind of kind of come out the top. 
that's where you know to stop. I hope the lighting is okay here for the camera. And there it is. And then I'm just going to do all 220 or so pins. Even though it really was just this section that was bad. The rest of the piano was was okay. I mean it can it could use it, but it was just this section that was particularly loose. So, there's six of them for the camera. And that is uh it's very permanent as far as as far as I can tell. Like I said, I've only been doing it for well, over a decade anyway, and, and the pianos that I followed up on have um have been nice and tight. The first time, by the way, I should mention you're not gluing the pins to the pin block. That that probably goes without saying, but I'll mention that. What what is actually going on is that the glue is getting down in there and it's coming in contact with the pin block and it's wicking throughout the pin block or at least it's getting in the little microscopic cracks and it just kind of fills in and it tightens things up. First thing that you do when you put a tuning hammer on it is you break that seal between the tuning pin and the pin block that, that the tuning pin is in. So uh, first thing that you do is you break that bond and, and now it, it's nice and smooth, it's not jumpy and it's, and it's tight. So uh, CA glue on a pin block, there you have it.